I, Stephanie Bain, Stephanie Bain, I have a books, 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 I, I, I'm a book writer. There's so many books. <laughs> Hello everyone, Stephanie here. Today's video is going to be a non-spoiler review on the Infernal Devices. Quick note, I've Notice that I do spoiler reviews a lot better when I just write it down, and I've been doing that on my Books Amino. So if you have Books Amino, just search for Stephanie Bain. I'll see if I can like leave a link to that down below. That'd be a lot easier because I find that it's a little tricky to look for people, but just like look me up. But I've noticed that that's like where I've been putting my spoiler reviews. Like we're like spoilery discussions in a way whether it's during the book or after the book it's just I find it so much easier to do that and I'm gonna leave non-spoiler reviews here so that way we can get straight to the point. So today's video again is going to be my non-spoiler review over the whole Infernal Devices trilogy. I'm going to talk very briefly about each book yada yada yada. The first book is Clockwork Angel. I gave this a four out of five stars. I did think this was a stronger start to the series than City of Bones was for the Mortal Instruments. I enjoyed it. I love the characters. I think it was just more sophisticated and just so much more enjoyable. I really did love it. I found it a little like cliche that Tessa is special just like Clary was. So I'll say that much. I wasn't surprised by anything of that. There was a few surprises, but I still enjoyed it. I just, I loved the writing. I still feel that, not necessarily in this one, we'll touch on that in a moment, but I did feel this was a stronger beginning to the series. And no, I don't care for this love triangle. Let me just throw that out there right now. I don't think it's the best love triangle ever. I think I have yet to really love one. It's tricky. So tricky. The second book was Clockwork Prince. I gave this a 4.25 out of 5 stars. This is probably my favorite out of the three books because I felt that it was the fastest pace. There was less dragging, which is something I find a lot in Cassandra Clare's books. She tends to start good in the beginning, really good towards the very, very end. And then there's this whole middle of just like slowness. Okay, that's a little exaggerated. Good in the beginning, slow in the middle. And then extremely at the end, it picks up. It's super quick. Again, I just, it's my favorite one. I really loved it. There was just things that happened in here that made more sense to me. Things that were revealed to us that I was just like, oh my God, that makes sense. I really enjoyed it. I really did enjoy it. And then the last one, of course, is Clockwork Princess, which I gave a 4.25 out of 5 stars. There was no waterworks. I did enjoy the epilogue. I will say that much. But I was very disappointed with the ending. Everyone talks so highly about it, and I think it's just because it's overhyped and everyone talks about it like that, that I feel I had a decent amount of expectations and they were not met. I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought so much more could have happened, and I do wish that Cassandra, like people say, oh my gosh, she doesn't, she's not afraid to hurt you. I'm like, yeah, she is. She, had, she doesn't do anything. I'm, uh, I want more. I want more from an author. I'm not going to lie. That's something that I feel like of all her books are just like they're good, but I don't think I'll ever find them great. That'll change maybe with Lady. Well, I already read Lady Midnight. I'm literally going to go review it after this. But I do feel as a whole that this trilogy is much better than the Immortal Instruments series. I, again, was let down by the last book, though. I find that and I talked about this in my wrap up that she drags on and then bam everything happens so quickly I feel like it's not enough time for anything to like settle in I want to simmer in all the sadness but it's sad and then two seconds later it's like oh everything's okay or so on and so forth things like that that's just an example but I really do wish it was a little more hard hitting and like you know like don't be afraid to break my fucking heart but for me I feel like it touches on the surface of a lot of things and it doesn't go deep it doesn't go in again the love triangle to me didn't make sense I was not for this love triangle and I was team gem I was team gem like if you read this maybe you won't agree with me but and I talked about it before there was just things that happened that I'm like Tessa was wrong with you like why are you doing this I did prefer Tessa over Clary I thought she was just so much more mature and I loved 
her character and everything that she goes through. I also wish that in the books though they were slightly more spaced out but really those are the only things I have that it dragged a little. It didn't live up to the hype and the love triangle was not my favorite. There was some characters in here though like all the ships I was just so happy with them and I really enjoyed it. I just I loved it and I kind of like just I devoured this trilogy so quickly and I do see myself wanting to reread it in the future but honestly that is my overall view of the trilogy. If you stopped at any point in Mortal Instruments go ahead and try this out if you haven't because it is better. That much I can say. I don't I'm not I mean that's up to you whether you think it's the best trilogy ever. Obviously not for me and if you guys know me you know what is the best and what would come second best but you know we're not here to talk about that although I would like to just talk about that freaking series all the time no but I, I really do feel like it was a lot of fun oh and another thing that I wish I think it would actually make the series a little bit better or at least for me because this is definitely comes to like taste I find that the romance in Cassandra Clare's novels tend to take away from the actual story because you're in this amazing world with all these crazy demons and downworlders and shadow hunters and the abilities that they can do and all the twists and turns that come about and are like explained to you I feel that the romance takes away from that these are romance novels not like urban fantasy or whatever you I think that's the genre so I feel like it would be a lot better if the romance was just slightly toned down, but that I think is me. I know that's me. A lot of people love it for the romance, and I'm over here like you're taking away from the story. The story is not who can get into whose pants. It's are you going to survive being fucking murdered, okay? That is what the story is for me. But anyway, I still really enjoyed it. I highly recommend it. I really do. And it was fun. Like, it was just so much more fun. And that's something that I have to say. I was happy to get back into the world of Shadowhunters again. Don't know why it took me so long to read it, because I've owned it for a very long time. I was just sitting on my TBR for a while. But anyway, I'm actually going to go review Lady Midnight now, so expect that in the next few days. But I hope you guys enjoyed this simple review. Leave me comments down below, though, if you want me to go into more spoilery depths, because then I could just literally read what I wrote in my book, Samino. I don't even, like, literally, I read Lady Midnight. I wrote all of my spoilery details on Book Samino, and I was so lazy that I didn't even copy and paste onto my Goodreads. I just wrote, it was so much better, yada, yada, yada. I, I, I can't. I spent like an 30, 40, maybe an hour writing out because the thing is, is I have this thing where I like type and then I erase and then I type and then I erase and then I'm here like, wait, what are all of the things I need to talk about? But uh, yeah, so I'm going to go review Lady Midnight and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.